Section 2. The Law of Karma You reap what you sow. In the Sutra of 100 Karma Stories, the Buddha taught us that all positive and negative karmic results don't ripen on the earth, water, fire and wind. Instead, they ripen on our five aggregates, 12 sense bases and 18 elements. Therefore, everything that we experience now in our body, mind and environment is the result of the positive and negative karma we have created in the past, but not imposed by any external factors such as gods, authorities or natural forces. Furthermore, everything that we do now will inevitably ripen its karmic fruit in our body, mind and environment in this lifetime, the next lifetime or a distant future lifetime. Everything that we experience is the result of our own actions. Regarding this, Two stories of King Prasanajit can provide us with many insights. These are sutra stories. During the Buddha's time, King Prasanajit had a daughter named Vajira, who was intelligent and beautiful. She was loved by her parents and respected by everyone in the palace. One day, the king said to the princess, You are very fortunate. Because of my power, everyone in the palace loves and respects you. However, Princess Fajira replied, My blessings come from my karma, not your power. Upon hearing this, the king became angry and said loudly, Let's see how powerful your karma is. Subsequently, he ordered his attendants to find the poorest beggar and marry Vajira to him. King Prasanajit mocked Vajira and said, Since you rely on your karma, you should no longer rely on me. From now on, go and live on your own. Time will verify whether what you said is true. At that time, Vajira remained steadfast in her faith without any regrets and left the palace with the beggar without hesitation. People in the past did not complain about their fathers. Even though the princess married a beggar, she still considered it okay. This is also due to karma. On the way, Vajira asked her husband, Are your parents still alive? The beggar replied, My parents were once the most prestigious elders in Shravasti. Now they have passed away, leaving me alone to beg for a living every day. Vajira asked him, Do you remember where their house was? The beggar replied, The house has been destroyed, leaving only an empty piece of land, but I still remember the address. Then the couple went together to their former residence. Surprisingly, wherever they went, treasures naturally emerged from underground. Using these treasures, they hired workers to build a house. In less than a month, the house was completed. One day, King Prasenajit suddenly thought of Princess Vajira and asked his attendants, How is the princess doing now? Someone reported, To be honest, the princess is living at no worse than you. At that time, Princess Vajira sent her husband to invite the king to their home. When the king saw the majestic house of his daughter, he was amazed. Then he went to ask the Buddha, What virtuous deeds did my daughter do in her past lives to be born into a royal family with a shining body? The Buddha told him about the past causes and conditions. 
91 kalpas ago, after Buddha Vipassian entered Nirvana, King Bandhuma built a seven-jeweled stupa to enshrine the Buddha's relics. Upon seeing it, the queen placed the jewels from her crown on top of the stupa and hung her wish-fulfilling gem around its neck. Meanwhile, she made a vow. May my body emit golden light. May I be noble and prestigious. May I never fall into the three lower realms and the eight states that lack freedom. This queen was the past life of Princess Vajira. Later, during Buddha Kasyapa's time, a woman planned to offer food to the Buddha and the Sangha, but her husband stopped her. Then she kindly persuaded him, saying, Since I have invited the Buddha and the Sangha to receive offerings, please let me fulfill my wish. Eventually, her husband listened to her advice. This woman was also the past life of Princess Vajira, and her husband was the past life of the beggar. Because he tried to prevent his wife from making offerings, he experienced the karmic consequence of poverty in many lifetimes. However, because he later listened to her advice, he became wealthy after marrying her. Nevertheless, if he leaves her, he will become poor again. As soon as he met Vajira, who was his wife in the past life, he became wealthy. If Vajira's blessings came from King Prasenajit, she would become poor after being expelled by him. However, that was not the case. Vajira's blessings came from her positive karma. Hence, although King Prasenajit could expel her, he couldn't erase the merits she had accumulated in the past or use his power to make her suffer poverty. One day, before going to bed, King Pazinajit overheard two eunuchs arguing. One said, My life entirely depends on the king. The other person refuted, No, it's one's own karma rather than the king that determines one's life. Upon hearing this, the king thought, the one who said my life entirely depends on the king should be rewarded. So he sent a messenger to inform the queen, I will send someone later and you can reward him generously. Then he summoned the eunuch who said, my life entirely depends on the king, and ordered him to bring fine wine to the queen. Unexpectedly, as soon as the eunuch stepped out, he had a nosebleed and couldn't move on. So he asked the person who said, it's one's own karma that determines one's life, to go on his behalf. As a result, the queen generously rewarded him with wealth clothes and jewellery. The person who received the reward came back to see the king. The king was surprised to see that the person was not the one he sent. Thus he summoned the person who said, My life entirely depends on the king, asking him, I ordered you to go, but why didn't you go? The person explained what had happened. Upon hearing this, the king sighed and said, the Buddha's teachings are true. Each person experiences the results of their own actions, not controlled by others. It is interesting, the king intended to reward the person who said, my life entirely depends on the king, but that person didn't receive anything. King Prasenajit initially intended to reward the person who said, my life entirely depends on the king. However, this person, 
who hadn't cultivated the merits for such a reward couldn't receive it. Conversely, the other person, whom the king didn't intend to reward, received the reward due to his positive karma. Therefore, happiness and suffering are caused by one's own karma, but not bestowed by an omnipotent Lord. We should have a correct understanding of causality. Although some other religions also talk about causality, they believe in an omnipotent Lord who gives them everything. Hence, their prayers say, Thank the Lord for giving us this. Thank the Lord for giving us that. This understanding of causality is incorrect. If one undermines the law of causality, one becomes passive. Their understanding of causality goes like this. As long as you follow the Lord's words and do good deeds, the Lord will give you this and that. In reality, this understanding also encompasses causality. If you follow the Lord's teachings and do good deeds, the Lord will give you blessings and happiness. This is how they understand causality at a kindergarten level. It is a way to explain causality to children. If you were to tell them that causality is a result of one's own actions, they may find it hard to believe. Hence, they explain causality in this way. Based on the above principle of you reap what you sow, we should understand that we are the masters of our own lives. What we will get depends on what we do now. The direction and destiny of our lives are in our own hands. We should make use of our lives to realise our values. Being independent and cherishing and respecting ourselves means being responsible for our thoughts, words and actions in every moment of our life. Only by doing so can we live without regrets and have a bright future. Due to self-attachment, each individual has their own storehouse consciousness. All the karmas and their results are stored in each individual's storehouse consciousness. This is why we say, you reap what you sow. All karmic results also ripen in the storehouse consciousness. Karmas and their results are inseparable from the storehouse consciousness. The vast world, the sun, moon, stars, mountains, rivers and earth are all the fruition of our actions, manifesting in our storehouse consciousness. Moreover, our birth Aging, illness and death, as well as our physical appearance, are all related to our actions. Our skin colour, physical health, personality and appearance are all related to our karma. Hence, we must be mindful of everything that we do. Therefore, those who firmly believe in the law of causality won't speak recklessly or dwell on others' flaws. Many people claim to be devout Buddhists, but after coming here, they still have numerous problems. Despite being here for several years, they still dwell on others' faults and easily get angry. This shows that they don't understand the law of causality at all. You may claim to believe in causality, but how do you believe in it? How can you harbour anger towards others? If you believe in the law of causality, you should only reflect on your own faults. Because everything, be it suffering or happiness, is the result of one's own actions. Don't dwell on others' faults. Moreover, 
Don't harbour anger towards others. If you hate someone, it indicates that you don't understand the law of causality at all. If you hate a sentient being, how can you claim to understand causality? We should understand that everything that sentient beings do is due to their ignorance of causality. Hence, we should have compassion for them. Since they don't understand causality, but you do, you should have compassion for them. Since you have the right view of causality, you should have wisdom. This is a type of wisdom. The right view of causality is a profound wisdom. Don't underestimate it. Very few scientists and philosophers in the world understand it. Although they are intelligent, few of them have the right view of causality and understand the principle of you reap what you sow. Only the Buddha imparted this profound truth to us.